All right. So uh, talk to us about juggling. Somebody says that you can juggle. Uh, yeah, I learned back in elementary school as part of this like accelerated program where if you're getting good grades, you could we would go do uh, like tumbling, juggling. I even learned to ride a unicycle. So at one point, I could ride a unicycle and juggle three clubs at a time. Are you serious? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So it was, this, this whole time I was thinking like like three balls. Yeah. Right. I wasn't thinking. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, that's pretty much the level of my capabilities these days. Anything that's kind of round, I can I can still juggle really well, uh, like three balls, rings, even. Um, Anything so, more than three? No, no. Uh, I can dual number. juggle with another person, so five balls between oh, the two of us. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if we only had video. <laughs> right in my head, I'm like, what about chainsaws? What about flaming? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think if, crazy. if I was that skilled, maybe the army career path wouldn't have been the one I chose. You know? <laughs> yeah. Circus. Seems I don't know. A unicycle true. and three clubs, that's pretty damn skilled. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> the, the unicycle, so I actually bought one this last summer. Because I was like, oh, it's been 25 years. I, it's like riding a bike, right? Uh, it is much harder doing that as an adult, for sure. <laughs> I was like whacking my shins and like almost falling. And now I'm not allowed to do it without a helmet and, <laughs> you know, safety on the side. Uh, so I want to get back to it because I just think it would be cool to be able to ride a unicycle and juggle again. Uh, try I to think it'd be cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would be way cool. <laughs> try to keep fine-tuning my uh, hand-eye coordination. So Yeah. Uh, you just uh, go down the street? Where do you go? To a park? Uh, no, just, just in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yep. Just okay. right in front of the house and in That's the driveway. Hilarious. And yeah, I, I think I'd do it in the garage with the door right? closed <laughs> until I got back to like not hitting my shins and stuff. It's probably smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm fairly clumsy overall. So it just plays a part in my life of, you know, falling and tripping and oh, okay. yeah, getting beat up. At least you're self-aware. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come to terms with it. Welcome back to GI and a Cup of Joe. Once again, I'm here with Annie T. Just a regular girl, and I'm here with Justin C. Just a regular guy. In this podcast, we'd like to take off the rank and get right down to just being a regular person who made a random decision to wear a uniform in the Idaho Army National Guard. All of us come from very different backgrounds, but we do have one common goal, to better our future. Not just to better our future for ourselves, but for our families and the ones we love. We encourage you to listen to each story and see how regular people with average grades, average attitudes, and common fears about their future find their strength and their ability to be resilient and to be able to accomplish extraordinary things. Welcome to Season 2. Well, today we're talking to officially, um, she's Chief Foreign Officer 3 at Kara Tank, uh, but honestly, she's just Kara. Let's go back to high school. Where did you go? What kind of student were you? Uh, so we moved to Meridian, uh, end of eighth grade. So I had about three months where I went to Meridian Middle School. Okay. And then I transferred over to Meridian High School, and that's where I went for all four years of high school. Meridian High School. Yeah. Favorite subjects, favorite teacher, what were your hobbies in high school? Uh, academics have not really ever been my thing. So I, I really didn't have a favorite subject. I, I did well in school. I think I graduated with a 3.4. I'm an A's and B's because like I, I'm a try hard, right? I'm not the smartest person, so I have to put in a lot more effort. Uh, so I put in a lot of effort. Um, I can really relate. Know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, relate. That's a theme. Yeah. That is a theme with almost everybody now. So what subject did you hate the most? Um, I, I struggle with math. Um, I don't hate it. I just, I can get basic concepts, right? Numbers. Great. You start adding in, you know, the Equations. alphabet and I'm like, that's not a number. That should not go there. That's not that's math. Fair. So, you know, yeah. Multiplication, addition. Great with all that. You know, I like, I like finances. Um, but yeah, any of that other stuff you start adding in, I'm like, meh. So I had in high school and in, in college, I had a tutor for every math class that I did. Just, I just struggled with it. It's not something I was ever skilled at. Both my brothers are like excellent uh, in academics and, and in math. So they uh, would always help me if I needed it. Nice. Nice, yeah. <clears throat> what hobbies did you have? Uh, so sports. Okay, what did you always, play? Um, so in high school, I ran cross country. I lettered my freshman year. And then I played basketball all four years in high school. 
Uh, I loved basketball. I was never very big. So I graduated high school. I was like 98 pounds. <laughs> like I was a very petite female. Um, so, you know, getting that college scholarship for someone that size probably wasn't my thing. But I did. I loved it. I was a good shot. Uh, I played varsity my senior year, and nice. we had a lot of fun. We weren't that good our senior year, um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then they had some classes, uh, like sports education or something. It was my, probably my favorite class in high school, and it was one of the baseball coaches who taught it, and we'd do, like, weightlifting, or we'd go um, out bowling in the community and a bunch of different activities, and so – I'm a really hands-on kind of person, right? Sitting in a class, learning stuff's not my thing. So if I can go out and do something, uh, I really enjoy that. I like figuring things out, working with my hands, being active. Uh, so that was a really awesome class. I'm the same way. I learn by doing, not necessarily sitting in a classroom. Yeah. I learn by failing. So <laughs> That too. <laughs> so cross country, what were some of your times? Do you remember? Ooh, uh, I think... One of my fastest times was 20 minutes and 22 seconds for the 5K in high school. Um, I wasn't one of the fastest. We had a great cross country. We, like, we won the state championships pretty much every year in high school. Um, so I was like, even though I lettered, uh, I was not one of the greatest athletes they had uh, running-wise. But yeah, 20 minutes and 22 seconds for the 5k i think it was my best time okay that's ridiculous yeah i was that's gonna say that's pretty good five, yeah five minute miles <laughs> five minute miles i take it yeah everybody out there five minute miles <laughs> i think i think that's like around six and a half. Oh my goodness yeah so i don't i don't run those anymore i i stay around the eight minute mile mark now a little bit older <laughs> gotta save uh, the knees man <laughs> yeah eight minutes still a good time right. what are you talking about <laughs> i take it yeah uh, so thinking back to your senior year, um, what kind of path did you have set for yourself? Uh, honestly, I had I had no paths. No uh, path? I didn't really think about being a real adult uh, outside of high school, right? That was kind of my focus. I did work, so I've been working since I was like 14 years old. Uh, my grandparents own a restaurant in Washington, and I would get shipped off there every summer so I could earn money and go to my basketball camp. I did the BSU basketball camp. Um, I saved up for that, and in any of my school clothes – um, you know, I had a paper out, whatever. So I've always been like more work mindset than sure. I really ever was for school. Uh, so getting into my senior year, I didn't really prepare. I didn't apply for any colleges. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, and I've always been pretty financially savvy and I knew student loans weren't what I wanted to do. And, right. and my parents, you know, we had, uh, I had five siblings and they both worked. There wasn't, you know, college funds set aside. Uh, so I was working out, it was called Boondocks at the time. It's now everyone knows as Wahoos. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. so I, I worked out there in high school. Um, my senior year, I only had to do half a day for classes because I met all my requirements. So I'd go out there and work the rest of it, and that's kind of what I did uh, when I, until I was about 18 and a half, and then I was able to get a job at Micron, and I worked both those for a while, and I was making really good money at the time, uh, a micron, so I quit the other job because I was able to pick up overtime shifts and, you know, make it so much money, what I thought at the time. Right. Uh, and, and going to school not knowing what I wanted, uh, school really wasn't in the picture. Take us from micron to uh, to the Idaho Army National Guard. Yeah, that's an interesting story. So I worked at micron for probably just over three years. Um and I made a really good friends with, uh, he, he ended up joining the guard. His name was Brady Lamb. And uh, Micron was going through some financial trouble, so they were going to start doing layoffs. And so they asked for any volunteers before they had to start cutting people. And, you know, I'm 21 years old at the time. It seemed great, right? They were getting like $7,000. You get a couple months unemployment benefits and some stocks. And that seems great, right? I wasn't a future planner, so... Um, which is weird because I had just got into my first house. So oh, I, wow. I had a Hubble home built when I was 20 years old, moved in when I was 21. So I had a mortgage, but I had three roommates. So I didn't really think of those financial things later on. So they did the volunteers. I volunteered, you know, got a, got a bunch of money, kind of lived on that, went and bought a motorcycle, made sure I was good on bills for a while, and kind of just uh, hung out and partied for a little bit. 
uh, with my friends. And then one day we were out, we were playing pool with Brady Lamb, and he's like, hey, I just went to this RSP, uh, you know, I'm, I'm joining the guard. He's like, you should come check it out, that like, you can bring a friend. So I was like, yeah, that seems like something up my alley. You know, I've always been kind of a tomboy, pretty active. The Army seems like something I'd probably be pretty good at. Um, and I came and did that, and uh, the drill that I showed up for, they were doing um, water survival. I went over to the Meridian Police Department, and they uh, we did all these things in the water, and they, like, submerged a car and put, like, five cones down there, and we had to jump down there, get in the water with a partner, and pull out the cones. Wow. And uh, my partner uh, wasn't really for that, so I ended up pulling out all five cones myself, and I just had, like, this great time, and I was like, wow, this is what the Army is like. Like, this is what I'd be pretty good at, so. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sergeant Major Cole here. Yeah, he, he was my recruiter. He's, he, uh, so, yeah, after I attended RSP, I was probably the easiest recruit you ever had because uh, you just asked for the paperwork and I just got it. Yeah. And then uh, as far as choosing, like, a career path, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I do remember, though, I, I wanted to be ammo supply. And uh, I was kind of Why talking, did you choose that? Uh, for some reason, it was, like, only – it was a short course. Okay. Uh, I had in my head that, you know, I wanted to get back home sure. as soon as possible. Um, and I took the ASVAB and I, I did really well. And uh, I think I was kind of, you know, being pushed towards maybe utilizing more of my potential uh, and kind of got pushed towards the, the UAV path, which would have taken me, at the time the school was about six months. Uh, so I was nervous about that, right? It's the first time I really ever left home. So six months, right. that was That's a long time. scary. Um but yeah, I ended up uh, joining as a as a 15 Whiskey, which is a UAV operator, unmanned aerial vehicle, uh, or in civilian terms, drones. Okay. Uh, so, so flying drones. And that's what I went to school for. And <clears throat> as soon as I came back, uh, the unit was getting ready to deploy, and they had a new MOS out, because uh, all the helicopter mechanics, the 15 Tangos, would come and actually work on our aircraft during drills. So they actually had created this 15 Echo to specifically for working on drones. And so as soon as I came back to the unit, um, they're like, hey, we're getting ready to deploy. We really need 15 Echoes. Would you be interested in going to the school and then deploying with us? I was like, absolutely, because so far I've had a great time in the military. Uh, so let's, let's go do some more. So I went back for another four months to Fort Huachuca, Arizona, which I really enjoy Arizona. And uh, became you know, a maintenance repair or crew chief. So we do we do both, right? We launch the birds and we work on them and all the ground support equipment. Um, and that's what I deployed as. And I, I picked up a ton of experience and knowledge um, from other soldiers on that deployment. And, yeah, when I came back, um, again, I didn't have a job. So I'd been on, you know, pretty much active duty for two years between the schools and the deployment. Uh, so I had saved up a bunch of money. I've always been a saver. And so when I came back, I was like, you know what? Now I have money for school, and I have these these GI Bill benefits that I can start utilizing. Uh, so I went to BSU for a year. And what was I, your major? So I was going to do nursing. Oh, wow. But probably not the career path, like looking back at it. Like I don't – I know why I wanted to do that, but I'm actually not great with body fluids. Like blood, <laughs> fine. But like – you know, diarrhea, vomit. I'm I'm a sympathetic <laughs> puker. Uh, so uh, that definitely wasn't probably the career field I, I should probably have chosen. So I attended BSU for a year, and at the uh, in my second semester, the Fed Tech position opened up here on Gowan for. Uh, working on UAVs. It was the first position of its type. Ah, cool. Uh, so I applied with for that, and I ended up getting it. And so I've been a Fed Tech ever since 2012. That's amazing. Yeah. What year did you join the military? Uh, 2009. Okay. So yeah. just a few a few years later, she got yep. a full time job. That's awesome. Yeah, I was extremely lucky, and so um, I kind of quit going to school because I like 
doing that second semester and like trying to learn a new job, I was a little overwhelmed. Oh, for sure. Um, but definitely I picked it up. So I actually have two associate's degrees now. And um, in January, I start uh, for my final class for my bachelor's degree in business management. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thanks. Jesus. That'll be yeah. great. I've, and I've paid like zero dollars out of pocket because I've utilized, you know, tuition assistance, the GI Bill. Uh, you should say that, that again. How much did you pay? Zero. Right. Yeah. No, yeah. No, nothing out of pocket. <laughs> Again, right? Financially, I, That's it's awesome. hard for me to part with money on something like that, even though I know education is important. But when I had other avenues to be able to access that money. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I definitely utilize them. So I'm, I use t- tuition assistance every year. So it's taken me a while to get my bachelor's degree. That's because okay. I, you know, I work, work full time. We do the yeah. drills. You know, I also have a broadening assignment. Um, and so I just take classes kind of in our slower months when we're not flying as much, which is, you know, the winter. And, uh, sometimes I'll take, you know, two, they're eight week courses, so they're condensed. So two is actually considered full time. And you're um, going to Boise State still or? Uh, no, I'm actually going to uh, online okay. American Military University. It's just a lot easier with my schedule. Yep. Um, yeah. and I can kind yeah. of pace myself. I'm, I'm one of the students who, you know, I don't, uh, procrastinate too bad. Uh, so I can kind of pace myself, and I actually have a 4.0 uh, in college. So, nice. Yeah. Jesus. How many yeah. math classes okay. are there? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> no, I ended up having to take three math classes, and I had a tutor for every every <laughs> bit of it. Uh, and then I was actually taking a math class when I got the Fed Tech position, and uh, I actually um, – so that this class doesn't count towards my – 4.0 now but I ended up getting a B in that class and it about killed me because uh, <laughs> I wasn't able to spend as much time with a tutor and, and take those tests sure. but when I switched degree plans over to the business management I didn't end up needing um, I can't remember what math course it was so, so it all that, worked out for you 4.0 <laughs> is, is holding strong what's been your greatest accomplishment to date uh, so definitely becoming a warrant officer and I'll, I'll explain the warrant officer kind of career path for uh, those who don't know it so um, I was enlisted. I was a, a E6 or a staff sergeant prior to uh, becoming a warrant officer. And uh, I was actually very, very fortunate that I had the warrant officer strength manager, former warrant officer strength manager, uh, Mr. Tomlinson. He was a CW3 at the time. Um, he ended up coming over to the UAVs and like really mentoring me and my counterpart, um, CW3 Stavanaugh. And at the time, we were both uh, E4s when we met him. We picked up E5 pretty recently and he kind of mentored us and we both made E6 and he's like, you know, this is kind of what you, you guys should do because you'd be really good at it. You know, here's the, f- you know, you could be future leaders in the unit, you know, you're, you're full time, like this would be great. Um, so he kind of mentored us and got us prepared for that and uh, he ended up, you know, picking up that CCWO, the uh, Command Chief Warrant Officer position and, and me and Mr. Stavenaugh end up, you know, running the platoon and, uh, you know, it's like your dad leaving you and you're becoming an adult for the first time. You have all yeah. this responsibility and all these soldiers under you that you, you, you're taking care of. And so uh, it made us nervous at first, right? We didn't feel prepared. But between the warrant officer program and, uh, like, his mentorship, uh, w- the unit's been great. So I'm having a good time. It's our little family out there. And, uh, yeah, becoming a warrant officer was the greatest choice I ever made because I get to – be that subject matter expert in that field. I get to mentor not only the soldiers in my unit, but other people who want to become warrant officers, you know, ask me questions all the time. And then when we, we do this program, you know, I'm working with uh, NCOs. Some are very seasoned and some are much older than me, and I'm having to, you know, mentor these individuals just based on my experiences, right? They might be older than me. They have more time in service. Um, but I've been a warrant officer, and I can kind of guide them in that path of transitioning from NCO to warrant officer because it is a different mindset in, in how you do things and how you operate. Was being a warrant ever in your vision when you first joined the military? Did you know what that was? N- never knew of them. No? No. Um, we did. So I did deploy with a warrant officer. He was a former pilot. And at the time, like kicking a, a former pilot over to UAVs was like, oh, the pilots hated it. <laughs> right? Like, uh, right. You know, we're not actually flying any of that stuff. So he was kind of disgruntled. Um, so I didn't have the greatest initial experience with the warrant officer. But ever since then, since I came home from deployment, I have had nothing but great warrant officer mentors. That's you know, awesome. I, I worked with uh, Miss Hartley. She was in charge of the yeah. the WCS program uh, when I first joined Mr. Maybon. 
Um, I'll actually be taking over for Mr. Reeser, who's the senior TAC officer. So TAC is Train Advice Council. Um, that's what we are at the WOCS school. So it's like the instructors of that school, right? Yes, correct. And uh, he's retiring, so I'll actually pick up senior TAC this year for my third year into it. And uh, that yeah. sounds fun. I think yeah. you'd be good for that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we've, and we've just had nothing but awesome soldiers come through that program. Um, and it's so cool to like see them uh, transition and go through it. Because at first, like you're just overwhelmed. You don't really understand kind of what's happening until you kind of look back on it and you're like, holy crap, like that was awesome. And that was a really hard school. It was the hardest school I ever did, like WCS or You know, people ask, you want to go through WOCS or basic training again? Like, I'll go through basic training like four times before I want to do W, you know, because it it was, it's a great experience, but you you put so much stress on yourself. And I'm one of those people who, you know, I want to do everything perfect and everything. And that's what a lot of these soldiers are. They've been the best of the best. And now they're competing with the best of the best in a whole new world. And it can be, it can be stressful. What was the hardest part of that for you, the most challenging? Was it just the overall mindset of the school? No, not the mindset. It's probably working with all these new, new personalities. Okay, you have a that's lot fair. of alpha personalities yeah, yeah. that you're <laughs> trying to integrate and get stuff done with. You have to be able to let them lead when it's their turn to lead and kind of take a step back when you're, you know, you're used to being that leader all the time or taking charge and you kind of have to let them and uh, figure out things on their own and, and just support them and their decisions depending on their role that they're put into. If you could give advice to a high school student, um, any high school student who's maybe stressed about their future, um, knowing everything that you've gone through and everything that you've accomplished, what would your piece of advice be to a high school student? Uh, so my piece of advice is, which is weird for me to say, because I'm a, I'm a stressor. Like I will stress about things because I want to n- be able to control the outcome. Uh, but I would say don't don't stress. I I had no clue what I was doing. Um, but I've always been the type of person who's kind of been able to figure it out as you get there, right? If you're if you're a hard worker and you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, like go try new things. Um, you're getting right out of high school. You might not know your the career path you want to take. You know, go go try a few different jobs or things you are interested in and see what kind of feels good because you could be doing it for the rest of your life. Um, did I think that you know when I joined the army that it was something I'd do for the rest of my life? Probably not. Um, but I, now that I look back on it, I couldn't see it really doing any other career. Um, just cause you know, I love what I do, the people and friendships, uh, that I've made like in my career has just been awesome. Like I have friends all over the world. I've got to travel all over the world. Uh, so, you know, this is definitely, you know, something that I am very grateful that I took the opportunity to do. Okay. That's good advice. Yeah, it is. Uh, so my final question for you is I need to know the name of your French bulldog because uh, I'm a dog lover. Yeah. So her name is Roxette or Roxy for short. Nice. Yeah. What and, color is she? Uh, she's brown and white and she is the cutest thing, but she's also a little troublemaker. So yeah, she gets, uh, she gets baby gated up cause she'll like to, you know, kind of get in, into stuff and she is like magical or something, but somehow she can like wiggle the baby gate in just the right ways that it opens the gate and then she can sneak out. It's her new fancy trick. Okay. So now we get to the part of the show where I get to ask my final question and it's an important one. Super important. It is the best one. Is Sasquatch real? Oh, so that's tough. I I love to watch the shows, (laughs) uh, you know, where they're hunting for Sasquatch or, you know, those shows are very entertaining to me. Um, I, don't know that I'm a believer. Uh, just I, I need to touch, feel, see, and with all the technology we have in the world today and not, have, you know, actually being able to see him yet, uh, you know, okay, we makes will, me wonder. We will edit the word not out of that. <laughs> so it says, I'm a believer. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's, that's fair. You know, we were just talking about this this morning, and uh, the variety of answers that we have received when we asked that question, for us, 
we we oh yeah yeah absolutely we just we assume that it would just be like this blanket oh of course yeah right <laughs> nobody's been oh, of course like everybody's been well i need to do more research and i need to see some more evidence and i'm like <laughs> what maybe we're the nerds <laughs> yeah like seriously like i read the tabloid magazines when i go through the checkout they say they're real that's enough for me um we need to go back because we stepped on some sardimeter's grass just oh. a little bit though um we referenced rsp I think you recommend RSP. Do you want to explain what that is? Well, I think I'll I'll leave it to the okay. expert. Here. Recruit sustainment program. Yeah. So that's the that's where our recruits go one week in a month, so they become administratively and physically, I guess, correct prior to going to basic training. Perfect. Um, and then Fed Tech. Uh, so Fed Tech is a federal technician. Uh, so I work my M day soldier position, which is you know the one week in a month, two weeks a year, and then I've also been fortunate enough to pick up a, a federal position working I you know I wear the uniform every day um, I get a separate you know retirement from that uh, and you know they have a, a ton of different uh, career paths you can choose from mine is fortunate enough that I do the same thing uh, for the army position that I do on the fed tech side working with the drones so perfect um, and NCO we referenced before the non-commissioned officer um, you one of you two referenced WOCS probably you uh, yeah, so WCS is the Warrant Officer Candidate School. Okay. That's uh, just how you become a warrant, the school you go to. Correct. Okay. And then we referenced the CCWO, which is... The Command Chief Warrant Officer. So that's your... The top of the top, right? Yeah, the top of the top uh, warrant officer in the state. And he's usually a five, correct? He is. Okay. Yeah. He, he sits next to the two-star and then the senior enlisted advisor. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'd like to thank our guests and our production crew for their time. Join us every Wednesday here on GI and a Cup of Joe. See you next week. <laughs>